Happiness is freedom. Freedom is having the choice to spend your time doing things that inspire you. Most people want freedom, but many people don't have a clear objective, a roadmap, or a strategy to achieve it. Everyone deserves to live an inspired and free life. I believe that when we're free and able to focus on our most meaningful work, we simply become better human beings. We can give more, care more, support more, and love more. I'm an investor, a trader, and an entrepreneur, and I get to spend every day doing what I love. At the age of 29 years old, I became financially free, and since then my mission has been to help and inspire other people to achieve the same so that they can be more of who they really want to be. Always free is about having a free mind, being free to question the status quo, free to take risks, free to say no, free to say yes, free from social idealisms, opinions and beliefs, free to disobey and free to wake up every day and spend your time to make a difference that inspires you. You can have it all. Living a life designed by you isn't a stroke of luck or a result of circumstance. It's a choice. So if you want to learn how to become free and live an inspired life, join me for the number one show for financial empowerment and wealth creation as I share my insights, tips, strategies and advice on what allowed me to be always free. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Jason Graystone. Well, 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 welcome back to the Always Free Show, guys. If this is the first time you're listening, uh, this is the number one podcast and show for financial empowerment and wealth creation. If you are here for the first time, you can stay around, but definitely go back to episode one. Uh, you'll get a lot of value from going back there. And um, if you're not new, welcome back. You're in for a treat because this week we are following on from last week. We're talking about social media, but we've got an amazing guest, Niall McMillan. Thanks for coming on, Niall. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no one's heard this guy speak, or very, very few people. That's it. That's his voice. That's his voice. <laughs> I, yeah, I do like to tease people and change. Uh, no one knows what I, I sound like, so every now and then I like to shock people. <laughs> very cool. So it's a, it's we're switching it up from last week. You're going to get a lot of value from this, uh, this podcast because last week we were talking about leveraging, like every ounce of leverage going into this this world of social media to provide opportunities. Uh, and, and the abundance of opportunities that is there if you, if you know what to look for. This week, we've got Niall, who's an absolute genius content creator and uh, has, has built an enormous following. And um, we're going to hear from his side about what the realities are of social media because this is a really important thing as well. And as you guys know, I'm all about real, truthful, being yourself, being always free and, uh, and not living a fantasy, not kind of trying to live some other life that's unsustainable that you can't keep up with and you're going to get a lot of value from this. So, Niall, first of all, thank you very much for coming on to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure. No, I'm excited. This guy, I, uh, I think it was in lockdown or one of the lockdowns that we had in this country. I switch on and, you know, I'm in bits laughing my head off because I see this guy who who's, looks very awkward <laughs> yeah. in a very awkward situation <coughs> and uh, and then i realized that actually this guy's you know he's he's created a character out of this, yes. this awkward guy and he very very cleverly puts together these these posts on social that are there for comic comedic value and uh they're just incredible and very very consistent so niall first of all why did you get into social media? Why did I get into social media? Okay, um, so when I was younger, um, I, um, I was uh, an actor at school. I was in productions and stuff like that. Aladdin, ugly sister of shows and stuff like that. Um, and then I went off to try to be an actor. I went to college. Uh, they tried to change how I speak, my accent, uh, and they tried to make me listen to Radio 4. And it wasn't fun anymore, so uh, I went off to learn, continue learning my other skill, which was being a geek. So working on a computer um, and being a nerd, really. And I kind of developed a career that uh, led me down to the path of working for the man, um, working a nine to five. I got to a point where I, I, had, I had three kids. I've got a wonderful wife. I've got everything society told me to have, as in a job, I'm married, I've got kids. And I found myself at a point that I was really unhappy and this isn't my wife's fault this isn't my my kids fault this was just because it got to a point where I kind of I ticked all of that off and I was sitting there thinking well is this it is this is this me just having to to fight to try to get that bonus to try and get that little pay rise every year and just try to get that little extra 
Um, and I was really um, low and, and down, snappy with the kids, and just really miserable, really. And I, I ended up going down this self-development path of reading all sorts of books. And to me, I, it, it blew my mind how so many people don't work on their self-development and why it's not teached uh, at schools and all sorts of stuff like this. And I went in this full path reading all these books um, and I kind of found myself that I kind of, I'm not uh, working on the things that I enjoy the most, my passions. And everyone has a passion. Uh, some people like to play with trains. Some people like to knit dolls out of cat hair. Mine is to do something for some sort of entertainment. Um, so I used to DJ, that was my outlet for entertainment along the way. I DJed kind of as I worked nine to five. Uh, then that kind of evolved and I ended up being a wrestler. I've always been a massive wrestling fan, always wanted to uh, be a wrestler. Um, so I thought, you know what, after reading all these self-development books, I thought I'll set myself a goal, become a wrestler. Did that for about a year and a bit. Then I had my third kid on the way, and I was like, I need to do something where I'm not going to break my neck, um, but still need an outlet. So I started doing these um, socials, um, and where I started to learn so much self-development stuff, I filled my head with all this knowledge and all this amazing stuff, and I just wanted to share it with everyone. So I started socials saying lots of quotes, not quotes, but like doing uh, Instagram stories and going out for my walk every morning and, and, and about how to go after things and taking action. And it got to a point um, where I felt like I was beating a drum and no one was listening. Uh, and I thought, I don't want to be that guy who's trying to tell everyone how to live their life and stuff like that. So I thought, I just need something, somewhere to put all this knowledge of self-development, everything I've learned. Um, so I ended up writing a book, and that to me, writing a book was another thing that was on the bucket list. Um, so I wrote this book, and my intention with the book was to, I wanted to write it, get all my thoughts out, the way I kind of saw the self-development world, because there's different aspects of it, of, you know, to be a hustler, as in working nine to five, having all the watches and stuff like this. There's that aspect of it, then there's a whole other aspect of it where it's like the hippiness of it, the spirituality, uh, meditating and crystals and different numbers, uh, which I like to find myself kind of in the middle of taking aspects of all different parts of them. Um, so I wrote this book, and my main intention with the book was to get it all out, but also I can hand it to my kids when I'm older and be like, there you go, there's life. Yeah, you, that's, that, that's, yeah. that's me done, I'm going to step away. Um, and then I set myself this next goal of wanting to do more and entertaining on socials, work hard to do it, and I said to myself, in two years, and I think this is 2019, I'll post every single day for two years, and just trust the process, 100% trust the process. Um, I posted for two years, it's now been three years. On the second year, um, coincidentally, it's around, around, around about the two year mark that this started to happen. So I think last year I set myself goals every single year. I've, I've realized now that I'm going on a massive tangent, but I'm hopefully it will get to a point soon. Um, it, after the two years, um, the, my New Year's resolution last year, um, 2021, the, the uh, December of 2021, was, uh, I think I was on 75,000 followers. No, it was to reach 75,000 followers for that year. Uh, and I was on like 60 something on TikTok, this is. Um, and then by February, I'd reached that 75. And in fact, I'd actually reached 100,000 in February. Um, so I'd already completed that goal. And then uh, I kind of developed this little character where it was reacting to viral videos and me kind of inserting myself into the scenario of it. And then, yeah, before you know it, things snowballed. I'm sitting here with 6.2 million, which baffles me. It blows my mind. Um, I feel incredibly grateful for the pos position I'm in. Uh, I love what I do. I love the following. And uh, I have that outlet now um, to be able to do what I want to do. So that is the long story of how I ended up uh, doing socials. Incredible. There's a lot to unpack there. Okay. Um, first of all, you said you kind of, well, first of all, was the wrestling, was that for entertainment value or was that like a... a no, yeah, that was the WWE uh, right. entertainment stuff. That was around Essex uh, really village halls and stuff like that. So, so there's, yeah. there's an entertainment thread throughout, of, throughout your life. Definitely, right? yeah. And, yeah. Um, and it's safe to say that's your true kind of purpose, your calling. Exactly. You're really that. compelled that's to do that. Absolutely. Um, 
when you felt a little bit down, um, maybe resentful is, is probably the little word, but you've kind of ended up in a position where you've not quite yeah, just, done all, uh, ticked all the boxes. And I've ticked still the boxes. I'm, I'm still sitting here thinking, well, is this it? Is this me, is this me for the next whatever, how many years? Um, and I just felt like I'm not done yet. So, yeah, right. Um, and, and when was that? Was that just before the TikTok that was, that, No, that was before my second kid. So oh, okay. The second kid. So that was 2017. Right. Yeah, it was around about that time that I started reading the books and, yeah. and, and, and you know, 30, 40 books later, I, I kind of found my step-by-step -step path of what I need to do, consistency, action, believing in myself, uh, removing limitations and yeah, stuff like right. that. Okay, that's so fascinating. So you've gone into this world of TikTok, you've seen the power, you know, you, you said snowballed. Um, that's literally what's happened, right? So last oh, year yeah. you've gone from 100,000 to 62 Million, million, yeah, yeah, uh, which is incredible, um, and something like six hundred thousand Instagram. Yes, as, yeah, as yeah. Well, so yeah. it's all filtered across. And yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You've really got your, yeah. It's genius. Go and go and check it out. It's uh, it's great content. Um, how do you feel about that? Like, what's the what's you know? Did you you didn't see that coming, right? No one no. can predict. Well, that. I didn't see it coming, but also at the same time, I knew like if I had a goal for two years, if you're consistent in anything for two years and you're applying it every single day, I'm at a point now where I don't expect it, I didn't expect it, but at the same time I sit here and think, well, I'm not shocked that, you know, I've got a follow, and that might, may sound arrogant, but if, I, if you're buying a lottery ticket every single day, um, you know, in two years' time, you're going to expect to have some sort of return. You're going to have some money along the way, and that's all social media is, is you're, you're buying a lottery ticket every day of every post that you'll do. You know, one may land flat, and others may win you a bundle of money, and that's why I'm kind of sitting with, with, with the 6.2, and I think with the two years, you learn so much about your journey and what you're doing, what your audience likes, and I always say there's three different parts to social media. Um, you need to first of all, you need to enjoy what you're doing because if you don't enjoy it, it's not sustainable. You need to be able to get to a point where you can be consistent and keep up with it, which uh, I, I'm at a point now and I love the content I do. There, there's other content that I could do or, um, where I use my voice and stuff where it's harder to, the production's harder to do. I'm at a place now where it takes me, you know, half an hour to an hour to do a video, which is a sweet spot. Um, the, the second part of that is you... And the massive thing that people don't understand with social media is you need to give someone value. There has to be a reason why someone's looking at that phone. Um, why should they care? Uh, a lot of people post and it's selfish. And they're, they're, they're doing it for themselves. They're not doing it for the end person at the other end of the phone. I, with my content, my main intention is I want somebody sitting on a toilet somewhere, waking up in the morning on a train somewhere, and just with a little snigger, just a little, <laughs> a little moment, a serotonin boost, a little moment of release. And that's what I want to offer. Um, and that's what I try to give. And there is a third point to this, but I've completely gone blank. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, ensuring it's sustainable. Yeah. Um, enjoying what you do. You've got to have a great relationship with what you're yeah. doing with socials. I think that's the third point. We'll say it is. Yeah. Um, and the main thing is, uh, yeah, giving value yeah. to someone at the other end. Absolutely. What did we say on the last show? Literally said... Please prove me wrong. Spend two years showing up every day yeah, yeah. and prove to me that you can't have a bigger following or have a bigger yeah, income. Uh, it's yeah. impossible. Like you, no, if you exactly. show up every day for two years, you're definitely going to... In anything. In in anything. If in you, anything. you work two years consistently on anything you're trying to do, you're going to gonna become good at it. Yeah. And, and another great point is the first point, which you, know, you have to enjoy it. I yeah. always say, like, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you won't enjoy the comments. And because they'll hurt, right? Because they'll know that what I find when people struggle with social media is when the comments hurt, it's because yeah. it's a mechanism telling them you're not being yourself. You're not, you're not loving something about what you've done. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, although there's a difference in people disagreeing with your content and things like that, but when something really hurts and you call them a hater or, a, you know, or you fight back, that's because you're not enjoying the content that you're putting out. Because if you was, you wouldn't care. Exactly. Right? I, and I think you, it's very easy to tell nowadays. I think it's, uh, there was a facade at, f at first with social media for a couple of years where you couldn't really tell if people... Now, I don't know if it's because I've been doing socials more, but now I can really tell behind the soul of someone's eyes yeah. if they're not 
believing in what they're doing and if they're, they're not enjoying what they're doing. And I think it's so important that when you're doing your socials, you have to enjoy it. You've yeah. got to, otherwise you won't, it won't be sustainable. You won't be able to keep it up and you will develop a bad relationship. You'll burn out. So it's exactly, it's exactly what we said on the, on the last show. You know, it's not sustainable. You won't feel fulfilled. You won't, you know, you won't be rewarded. You'll burn out. You'll, you just won't keep it up. Exactly that. So the other great interesting thing that I, that I picked up on is you've got it around to half hour to an hour for a, a piece of content, right? Yes. Now, a lot of people watching this are going, 6.2 million followers, he's going to have all the time to do this stuff. You know, he's, got a, <laughs> he's probably got a great massive studio and he's got like a team, right? This is brilliant. Niall, go, go. right, you mentioned that you enjoy your work. You've yeah. still got your job, right? Yes, yeah. I, look, I've got three kids. Uh, I've got a mortgage to pay for. I've got responsibilities as a father. So I've got a nine to five job. Um, I enjoy my job. I enjoy yeah. what I do. I, I you know, there, there is always the thought of making socials my full time, which would be, you know, uh, nice. It'd be a dream come true. But at the same time, there is a part of me that thinks, um, you know, I'll, I'll be bored. I'll be, I'll be unfulfilled just by doing socials. Um, but uh, yeah, the, is, that, the reality is that because is you don't actually interact with the audience, or is is that like uh, no? That, it's yeah, one way? Is, that's a good point. Yeah, um, I think. <laughs> I mean, I've tried different things. I've tried, you know, streaming on Twitch. I've tried doing live streams and stuff. But I think uh, it spoils the mystique a little bit by sharing the voice. And I think there's so many people out there who are doing social media where they like to show their reality, their their their, their day to day of doing things and stuff like that, which is which is fine. But I think it's almost getting to a point where uh, you're miss. <sighs> Mr. Bean, if you heard him every single time, you know, speaking every day and watching Mr. Bean's uh, Instagram stories, he wouldn't be Mr. Bean. There's no. that mystique about him. And I say Mr. Bean just because, I, for, disclaimer as well, uh, I'd like to say uh, on record that people, I think, think I'm trying to be Mr. Bean or try to copy Mr. Bean. I love Mr. Bean just as much as every other person. And I can see the relationships with it. But I'm not like, I'm going to be the next Mr. Bean. Yeah, no, I never, like I never that. put Mr. Bean on oh, okay, you. good. No, no, but oh, I, can see, I can see the, the similarity. Yeah, yeah. I, just, just, I don't want people thinking I'm just trying to be a... <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, a B-side, uh, Mr. Rowan Bean. Atkinson. That's yeah. it, yeah, yeah. But a lot of, who doesn't love Mr. Bean? No, so. but let's talk about that, though, because the content side, uh, first of all, what we've just said there is, you know, you can have a massive following and, you know, you s still have a job, still have a normal life, still have uh, bills to pay, yeah. kids to feed. Last week, we was talking to Aaron, who's leveraging every single, you know, percentage of his following and he's, he's very equipped and skilled at influencing and doing brand deals and partnerships and the rest of it. But that all comes down to knowledge and, and where you're at on your own development yeah. journey, right? You know, yes, it, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure that uh, Niall, if he, was, if, if he had some of Aaron's tactics... He might yeah, have, no, definitely. It, it might be a completely different path there, right? Yeah, no, I think um, when, when I first hit my first million on TikTok, there was uh, genuinely, there was a thought that, Okay, I've hit a million. Where's the guy at the door with a check? With the money. Like, where's the money at? This is, this is it. Um, but the guy never came, and he still hasn't come. Um, and what I've found now is if you want to make money on socials, I think you can very quickly. I could very, you know, I've got a following. I could do lives. I could do gifts every day. I could ask for subscriptions. I could maybe do a, a set of T-shirts and sell some merchandise. Um, it's just me as a person, I think this is just an indi individual thing, maybe something I need to go, go over with a therapist or something, but I don't enjoy selling. I don't enjoy, to me, I'm like, this is a privilege. This, I enjoy giving this for free. If I can earn money out of it, fantastic. You know, let's earn some dough. But um, I'm not going to sell my soul uh, I'm not going to, yeah. you know, I think... Well, go, go against who you are to, to get the money. Right? Exactly. I think with that relationship with yourself... Um, to me, I don't want to sell out, and I think uh, I want to be who I am. And I think uh, my following appreciate that. They kind of have a sense of who I am, although I don't talk, is that I am just someone who turns up and just I'm just trying to entertain you. And that's it, that's it. as much as it is. Uh, if I was in this for mo the money, you wouldn't keep it up. The, the money, you know, I'm lucky with 6.2 million followers and stuff. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I could probably earn some more money. But at the same time, it's taken me a long, you know, two, three years to earn, to get to a point where I could potentially sell my soul and make some money. Um, so you, if you're in it for the money, you, you know, you've got... Um, you need to manage your expectations a little yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and it goes the other way as well. You know, I've worked with influence, uh, 
uh, people who have a big influence, people who have a big following, and they earn a lot of money, but yeah. they have no money because it's it's all going in and out. Yeah, it's all yeah, kind yeah. of relative to how they live their life. And, yeah, uh, that's yeah. That's a lot about what we talk about on this show is, you know, your freedom comes from liquidity. Uh, yes. Having, managing what you earn, whether yeah. you're in a job or whether you're, you know, earning hundreds of thousands every month on social media. It's, yeah, yeah. You can still be very entrapped. Exactly. I think it's important. To, uh, things I've mentioned, I like to be transparent as well. Um, I have earned money from, from TikTok when things bloomed. Uh, you earn money through TikTok Creator Fund, which again is once you have uh, a big following, isn't isn't anything to be desired. It's not that YouTube money. It's not that money. No. But um, yeah, I earned, I've got a pot now. And what I've done is I've kind of earned the money and I put it to a side because I'm at a point now where it's like, well, there's a tax man out there. I'm, I've got that maturity about me where I'm like, I need to declare this, yeah. you know, before I do anything, I can, I can expense stuff and stuff like that. Um, but I've got money. I've got it to a pot, and which is why I'm very interested to speak to you, Jason, as well, because I'm at a point now where it's like, well, I've got this. How do I make the most out of this? I think you're right. People, when they're younger, they would have splurged that money. They would have spent it. They would have done it. Um, and then th they would have got to a point where they may burn out or they may realize it's not sustainable and they've just squandered this opportunity of having this, this money. And I'm at a point now where I'm at this, uh, I've got this pot and I do kind of think to myself, there is going to be a point where this could all go away. I'm very aware of that. Very aware that, uh, you know, the interest from the public can go yep. away and I want to make the most out of this opportunity with the, with the pot that I have. Um, so yeah, that, that's uh, yeah. It's like a rug, isn't it? There. The whole social media, it's like a rug. Exactly, and it can that. be pulled from you at any minute. As, Absolutely, as, as yeah, I've yeah. found working with some other, uh, you know, big influencers, and overnight, you know, they've got no email list, nothing. Exactly, they've got no one to contact. The, the whole yeah. thing's gone. And um, well, TikTok could be banned. Yeah, that's yeah. what they're talking about now: is TikTok being banned. And I was very conscious that I didn't have a big Instagram following for a long time. I had six, five to six million on TikTok, and then you look at my Instagram, I'm like. Well, I say like 10,000, yeah. which is still a lot. But when you compare it to, I was like, crap, if TikTok goes, I'm in, I'm in trouble. And luckily, my content has started to have a presence on, on Instagram now. And that's kind of blown up. That's been my, this year's been my year yeah. for Instagram. Last year was my year for TikTok. And I think Instagram is a little bit more of a, um, you look at TikTok, I think a million on TikTok is like, I see yeah. it as a conversion as like 100,000 yeah, yeah, on, on, yeah. on TikTok. On Instagram, sorry. So I would, yeah. I would argue that the, the Instagram following are, are, are really the raving fan fan base. Yes. Because you know, they've, they've either followed you on both. Yeah. So they've taken the time out to find you on Instagram as well. That's it, yeah. Or they're just more, they want you in their face a little bit more, a bit more intimate. I, I see Instagram. As yeah, yeah. And I used to do stories on Instagram. That used to be my outlet to be able to see me behind the scenes. Cool. Um, but then, yeah, as I've grown, I, it's, I feel uncomfortable which is great because anytime I feel uncomfortable with anything I'm like this is my shtick this is yeah. I, I can uh, this I can be this. this is my character yeah. um, but I get uncomfortable sharing my voice and I forget people don't hear my voice and if people want to hear my voice they can find it listening to this podcast I've done stuff on Spotify and stuff like that um, but yeah I don't do any stories now because I want to keep the mystique alive I yeah think. I like the mystique amazing uh, so a little bit about um, you, you say uh, the opportunity started coming at, um, at a million followers. Yes. Um, there are, and first of all, before we go into that, actually, I, I just want to touch on when you said you, know, you can earn a lot of money and then, you know, it, the rug's pulled from under you or yeah. you burn out because you're trying to be someone that you're not and you just don't want to do it anymore. And then you've spent all the money that you've earned and you're back to square one, literally. And, exactly, yeah. And I always say, like, every penny you spend is a penny you've got to earn again yeah. to yeah. have that time uh, money buys time and, and that's literally it so what I'm very aware of at the moment is kids they're looking up to people with big followings yes um, you know you might have a kid say oh he's got six point you know my kids might have said yeah, oh yeah. you're interviewing no he's got uh, six million followers you know and then you say he's got a job and they're like how can he have a job yeah because yeah. they've got this warped perception of, of what yeah. social media is yeah, um, definitely. So, how can like what I'm what I'd like to talk about is the realities. You know, what what are we gearing kids up for? What should they 
be approaching this? Yeah. Or how should they be approaching this? Yeah, yeah. I think everyone, uh, I, I, I know my kids uh, and everyone's kids, when they're younger anyway, uh, they're all trying to do, subscribe to my channel. They're in front of a ch uh, their iPad yeah, yeah. recording something. Subscribe to my channel. They haven't got a clue what it means, subscribe yeah. to my channel. But they're saying it because they've seen it and they watch yeah, videos, yeah. opening stuff, hair, makeup, whatever. Um, they go through that phase. And it is scary. You do worry kind of thing. I'm very happy with my kids that I know that I've set them up off the realities of yeah. it. They see it day to day. To day. But certainly, 100%, there are a lot of misconceptions. And like I said, with myself, when I thought I would get to a million, I thought, whoa, dreamland. This yeah. is different, different levels. Um, and it's certainly not been the case. And I'm not even, it's difficult because I'm not disappointed because I just enjoy the journey. I know I'm on a journey and I'm enjoying that. It's important to focus on the day-to-day -day of it um, and not, I'm nowhere near done. And I'm excited about that. Yeah. And I'm excited, like just sitting in opportunities, sitting here with you, yeah, Jason, just absolutely. doing this and just being able to speak to different audiences. This is I'm a, a very privileged position. I don't need money to 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 get something out of it, if that yeah. makes sense. It would be or, nice. Or validate you. <laughs> it would be nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, exactly, to validate yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting what you say about the, the YouTube, you know, subscribe to my channel and stuff, because you do see a lot of kids thinking that that's, that's what you've got to do, subscribe to the channel, you know, and, and you think, uh, and my kids, you know, one of my kids is, uh, both of my kids have, have kind of trialed YouTube, and, yeah. um, and I tell them, you know, you have to give value, like you said at the beginning, Definitely, you have yeah, to yeah. provide value, you can't just ask for something, No. you have to give someone value, and they're, and they're kind of of this opinion, well, you know, the people that I look up to don't provide value, they're, but they do, it's entertainment, right? Yeah. And, and, that's what they don't see. There's basically three categories on YouTube, which is motivation, entertainment, and education. Yeah. And you are going to be in one of those three categories. Exactly that. Although entertainment doesn't feel like they're providing you with anything, they are. You know, you're watching them. You're sitting there watching them for hours exactly. every yeah, day, right? Yeah. So, um, on the on the flip side of that, where I'm going with this is, it's okay to then ask for stuff. And I think that's maybe where you. Oh, I'm professional. Uh, <laughs> that's maybe where you're. Uh, a little bit too altruistic rather than, yeah. you know, you haven't got that kind of narcissistic balance yeah. quite right where you're, you just want to give for the audience yeah. and, uh, and maybe not, not receive. Yeah, I think that I do like the idea of maybe one day of me cashing in and going, I'm going to ask for a lot here <laughs> and, then, and then just get it all and then maybe cash out and uh, set The channel closes somewhere. down. And exactly. Like, this, this profile doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. But I think uh, I'm very geared up from my upbringing. Uh, my, my parents raised me very empathetic. Yeah. I think it's a fantastic skill. I love it. I would promote it for anyone to be more empathetic, to always think of other people. Uh, luckily, my daughter and stuff like that have the, this trait. But you're right. There, are, there is a miss, there's an imbalance somewhere where I'm, maybe I could uh, lean the other way a little bit every now and then yeah. and have an ask. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, but it's yeah, that's probably my weakness. But it's my strength at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. Really, really cool. So if anyone was thinking about you know going into social media or putting themselves out there, because yeah. I'm sure when you started doing it, maybe it was a little bit out of your comfort zone and a little bit... Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, lo there's all sorts of different things. I think uh, with the speaking and stuff like that, I'm so happy. Like My, my, my shtick is that I don't speak. It's an yeah. incredible thing. I think that's, uh, just as a tangent, I think that's what's helped me explode is because um, where I don't speak, algorithms don't hear my voice. They don't hear that I'm English. So I, my content gets pushed out. Yeah. Globally, oh, you know, my third largest follower is Brazil. Um, right. Yeah. So, so Chinese, Japanese, anybody. Yeah. So I think, and you don't. I didn't realize, and again, back to Mr. Bean, you don't realize how much of a global entity he is because his his comedy can be enjoyed, um, you know, globally. Yeah. Um, and I, with my videos, I think anyone can watch the video, understand the story, and 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 enjoy it. So I think that's kind of helped me with. Uh, with the, 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 the growth anyway. Yeah, fascinating. Mr. Bean, actually, Rowan Atkinson, I always remember, he was, I think he's like a billionaire. And, yeah, and, I, and, I wouldn't and be I, surprised. I think I remember him being one of the first people to own a McLaren uh, oh, really? F1, and I yeah. thought, wow, that's like a, it was like a 600 grand car, and yeah, I remember wow. thinking, how is he Yeah, so yeah, and he, with two seasons rich. as well. He did two seasons of Mr. Bean as well. Yeah, two seasons, think? two seasons. So, yeah. And when you think about it, there's no subtitles needed for your content. No, there's no, no translations needed. There's yeah, like everyone yeah. can understand it. Everyone gets on board with it. So you don't even have to talk. Um, yeah, yeah. But 
what I, was, what I want to get to is people do really have hang-ups about it. They know that you know there are creatives that have got are really gifted. There's musicians, there's brilliant um, you know comedians, and there's people out there in the entertainment yeah. uh, side of things. But they're petrified of of, of social media. Um, yeah. Why do you think that is? What, what scares people about it? I think pe- people tend to think there's a there's a wrong and right way of doing it. There's a certain way of doing social media that you have to talk, you have to do. You have to try to share your life. You have to do all these different things. Um, my thing is, there's no wrong, there's no rule book for so. You can literally do anything you want on social media. No one can tell you. There's no police out there. That's, I mean, obviously, not to you know break guidelines for for social things. Don't share anything unnecessary. Um, but you can, it is in truly in, entirely up to you. My thing is a voiceless character. Um, you, you get people who just like share pictures off like a bus stop or something like that. They'll go around to different bus stops around London and they'll take a picture and they may have a following and stuff like that just for sharing bus stop locations. They're just taking images, but there'll be somebody out there who enjoys that piece of content. My thing, I mean, it's taken me two years to get to a point where I, I've figured out what's sustainable, I've figured out what I enjoy and I've figured out what gives the best value. Those are the three things I got there. Those are the three things that you got to master, but it took me a long time of doing different things, different, different kind of character work, talking, sharing motivational stuff to kind of get to a place where I have a good relationship with what I want to do and I'm giving them the most value. Um, it's, but you've got to work and do those different things. And B, it has to be something about you. Has to, don't try to be uh, compare yourself to other people. Don't try to be the second, third, fourth version of Jake, Paul, Logan, Paul, or all these different people, Towie people. Don't try and be these these people. Be the number one authentic you, because yeah. no, no, you've got uncomparable. No one can beat that, and you, you're winning. You've won. Yeah. And so the, that's the, that's what I just try to. That's the relationship I try to have, and um, it's worked for me. Hundred percent. The 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 irony in that is kids try to do stuff where they think it will blow up so yeah. you can't do that because it won't blow up yeah. you have to be like that because that's that blows up yeah, so then yeah. they try and reach for that product and just go after that when exactly in, in yeah, actual fact yeah. you know this guy's being yourself he's living proof that you can do very very well on social media just being yourself you know, yeah and, and bringing out that natural gift uh, that you've got inside of you and everyone's everyone's got a gift inside of them exactly everyone's that. got value inside of them um really really cool so What's next? Like, what, what's your plan? You got goals, right? Yeah. And by the way, you mentioned the the two year goal. Uh, and uh, there's a guy called Daniel Mack. Do you know Daniel Mack? I, who, who walks up to cars and says, "What do you do for a living?" Yeah, no, I've uh, seen him. I've seen right. that. But the thing is, again, I've seen him, but I've probably seen loads of other people trying to beat him. So it's difficult. <laughs> so, it's difficult totally. to know which one he is. Um, but so certainly, I've seen. But that. he's I'll two years. Else. Two years he did that for. Okay. Now, yeah, yeah. Ferrari, Lamborghini, are giving him cars. You know, and he's got wow. the cars because he's, you know, he's just himself Wrong gig. asking. Him <laughs> <laughs> but what is next for you? You say you've yeah. got resolutions, you've got plans, goals every year. What's, what's the, the main priority for me is to keep doing what I'm doing. I enjoy Enjoy what I do is to it's enjoy. It's got to be monetization. No, actually. yeah, no, yeah. I'm leading to that, Jason. <laughs> so, yeah, hundred percent. It's uh, it's to enjoy what I do, uh, be self-aware, and enjoy the privilege that I have, and to serve the following that I have, and to hopefully reach and grasp more. That's goal one. Goal two is, uh, and I should do my goals every year. We have a whiteboard. My wife, the kids. We literally write this year, next year, next five, next ten. Right. Everything, and I highly promote whiteboards because whatever you it's a, it's a shopping list whatever you write on that whiteboard 80 percent of that whiteboard comes true yeah. and then some yeah. so i always promote to write things down have a list because it's a shopping list it is it is you asking to get that spiritual esque asking the universe to, yeah. to to return something for you um and everything i write on that board like i said 80 percent of it comes true and then some so um what i've wrote, written for this year is tv um, TV work. Um, I would like. I like the idea of having a, a TV show for the character, um, and I'd like to explore different things. Character, different characters. I like. I like the idea of playing a good guy and a bad guy, and different characters within, like an Eddie Murphy nutty professor thing. Um, but it's to a point. I am very much limited in my head. I'm very good at writing 50 second pieces of content, uh, scenes. But I need, I'm very aware I need people to write longer form. I'd yeah. like to get to that longer form point. That YouTube money um, would, be, would be good to get longer form. Um, and then next year is movies. I want some sort of, 
I want to step into that world. I want to see what it's all about. I want to see, uh, I like the idea and I keep trying to sell this as being the, uh, the cameo of awkwardness. So uh, you think of Stan Lee and Marvel. He appears in every yeah, Marvel right, film. Yeah. What I want to be is not Stan Lee of Marvel. I want to be the, the, just the awkward guy. I want to appear in like uh, Good Morning Britain, okay? Just something awkward happens. I'm there. <laughs> uh, like some sort of film, like Downton Abbey 3. Something awkward happens. I'm there. Some uh, you know, anime cartoon. Yeah, right. You know, just <laughs> whenever something happens, I'll pop up and somebody will be in the cinema with that Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, shit, is that... Is that good? And that's it. I want it to be gone. Five set. I love the idea of that. Um, but yeah, uh, TV, movies. And I think naturally, that's what I'm trying to strive for. Naturally, if I did that, the money would, the, the, there would be more opportunities, more money there. Yeah. Um, I'm not ready to sell yet, like as in sell merchandise and stuff yeah. like that. But certainly, if I could earn some more money, that'd be great. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, would, I would look at it like, you know, the more. If you earn more money from it, then you can serve more people potentially. Yeah. And oh, yeah, yeah. You know, look at it this way: you might be doing a, a disservice to your people by not. No, hundred percent. Right? So, you, if you look at it that way, it might help with your. Yeah, <laughs> I, ha I have. Uh, I, I, with the TV and movies, I know that sounds very um, uh, egotistical for me to. Well, why should I? Um, but it's because of my following that I, I feel like an ob an obligation that. I get a lot of comments to say, I'd love to see you in your own show. I'd love to see you yeah. in the movies. You've got a knack for something. And I feel like kind of, obviously I've got that desire for myself, but have they? Um, so I do have feel this obligation. I want to evolve things into the next bigger world. I want yeah. to take it from uh, a phone into into a bit of TV uh, work. And t uh, well, I've got TV work. Um, I did a cameo for a TV show yesterday, which was exciting and nice. I felt at home, which is comfortable and reassuring. Um, and then, yeah, obviously movies is uh, TV first. We'll go. Yeah. We'll hopefully step into the movie realms uh, afterwards. So yeah. Excellent. So. Just uh, on, a, on a technical level, yes. for anyone, uh, you know, they, they might think, oh, I'm not very good with, with phones, not very good with cameras, so good. just a little bit of uh, insight into how you create, like what yeah. technique do you use, what app, like how do you do no, it? No, absolutely good. Okay, so first things first, just start. Like whatever you've got, whatever device you've got, you've got an iPhone 2, any sort of camera, whatever you've got, everyone's got the ability to create content there and then with their phone, like immediately put it out there and just start. There's no, like, don't worry about production value. And I, could, I can attest to you, I'm sure, that when you started this podcast, um, the audio quality oh, probably wasn't sure. great. You probably didn't have these microphones, but that evolution. I use my phone. Exactly. Use and my that phone. evolution is a, is a satisfying thing. Like, I enjoyed listening to you at the very start of your podcast. And Jason always yeah. says at the beginning of his podcasts, go back and listen to Day Dot. And he, that's what I did when I first uh, got introduced to you, was listen to the first bit, got told to go back. Oh, go on then. <laughs> go back and you learn Jason's journey, which is, uh, which is you have more admiration and understanding of what Jason's gone through, which is, uh, which was, I'd recommend it. Um, but yeah, start your journey now. Like now, uh, I'm at a point now, I have an iPhone. Majority of my content is less, this is all I use. I don't use anything else. I use a laptop now because I've kind of evolved. Um, like, but it's all shot on there, pretty much. Everything's shot everything on there. Everything's shot on Nothing the phone. Nothing else. Yeah. Everything's done on there. Um, I did podcasts like you did on here. Everything. That, that is my be all and end all right there. Um, I'm at a point now where the backgrounds of the stuff, people who uh, who don't watch my content, I basically, I put myself in, in green screen, I put myself in scenes and I use a green screen, I use a background um, to kind of put myself in these different scenarios and scenes. I can be in different world, different countries, wherever. Um, and what I just used was TikToks has a green screen effect that you just use, you put a picture on it and you're there. And that was how I grew all my following. And I look back now and I think, oh, it's disgusting. You can see like the green bit there. You can see where it, the, the, the background I think shimmers that's what and makes stuff it like more, that. The, I think people like that. Exactly. They like yeah. the authentic. But now I've kind of evolved. Because I, I, like I said, I'm a geek. I like to yeah. learn the technologies and stuff like that. And I like to try to add different things. And the, the production value's gone up a little bit in regards to what I use now Premiere Pro. Yeah. Um, just for the background, really. And I, I think... Um, when I did a TikTok, I was in snow. 
I did Premier Pro, I changed my background, and all of a sudden I added like an effect. So when I'm in the snow, uh, like when I talk, well, the, 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 and I added that on like top. <laughs> in essence, I'm just in my, and I have a conserv quite a, a long, large conservatory in my home, and all I am doing is I have a pop-up green screen, 24 pound from Amazon, amazing thing, hook it up, and I'm in front of that. Yeah. So every scene I'm in, it's just me, I've got my kids running around me, I've got my dog, it's just, that's, and I'm just in my conservatory filming that. So it's very surreal and just strange, uh, but wonderful at the same time. Amazing, so mm. how much of, how much of you, to get to what you was doing and getting to six million followers, how much have you spent? Uh, Aside from the phone. Yeah, the phone's probably the, the largest expense, but I mean, everyone has a, yeah. uh, it, that could be a iPhone 8 and I could be just as fine. Um, I've probably, I've bought a big ring, ring light. You see a lot of TikTokers with the ring light eyes and a huge, great big ring light. I bought that, but then I realized everyone's doing that and I felt, I don't know. Uh, that was about 65 pound. The green screen was about 24 pound. Uh, 100 quid all in. Yeah, I bought a lot of lights. I'm still trying to get, this is great by the way, you've got two, two great big lights in here, soft lights as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I bought a lot of lights, stands and stuff. I've still got the same pokey uh, tripod stands and one of them's broken, so it's lovely. I love it. Yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, so about £100, yeah. Not £100 and that's it. You know, yeah, you, no, you, can, you can do... Props. I use a lot of props. I spend money on props. So that's probably it. I've seen the detail that you've gone to. I've studied some of your uh, social posts, and there's one where, like, because what you'll do is you'll pretend you're in the scene. Right? Yeah. So if you, if they do something and you pretend you're them, yeah. which is kind of the exactly the, the, um, nutty professor type thing yeah you'll actually wear their clothes so you're you're yeah. seeking out where to find like and similar I, clothes that's and uh, that's an important thing as well is i care so much about the detail and i think that's what's helped me i think people appreciate that like i remember i there definitely was, do there was one there was a pint glass with a video and i was like i would need to do that video so really it was a viral video at the time i was like i'd love to be in that scene it'd be really good but i thought i need the pi same pint glass and it was like a uh, miller's light pint glass i thought i'll google it find it normally nine times out of ten if it's a good day i'll find it i can buy it i'll get it off amazon and get it the same same day next day i can record couldn't for the life of me get this um pint glass i ended up messaging the lady who'd done the video and i was like i'm really after this oh, pint really? glass where can you find this so I, I i can't find it anywhere it was a special edition limited whatever uh pint glass and i said look is there any way that i can actually purchase uh this pint glass and get you to send it over. And she was like, it's my husband's pint glass, I'll ask. Got it, got it corried over. Wow. Um, but it's a sad story, it's not a happy story. She corried it over and it turned up smashed. Oh. <laughs> so, but I, I, I then ended up finding one on eBay and it was like, there was like a, one logo that was missing on it and it was like 64 pound that I ended up buying it. But it, it's so important, that 64 yeah. pound, that, that video, that TikTok video, I don't know if it did, but it might have earned me 100 pound if, yeah. it, if it popped. Yeah. Um, so, Return it like I always invest as, as a person should invest in themselves, and you always see a return. Yeah. Um, but I invest, yeah, for, in props. So I probably uh, and I see that as investing in the value delivery. It's not yeah. like you, we're sitting, you know, my studio now, the always free studio. We're in a remote location, but it's a seventy grand studio which has yeah, been yeah. accumulated over time. Yeah. But that's quality value. It's not. Um, it, it, it's not value value yeah, you know yeah, so yeah. i can still say the same information and as long as i'm on a, even 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 on, on a phone in the dark you'll still get the same value yeah, yeah whereas buying more equipment might make it look better but it won't give you more value no. whereas in entertainment it's the it's the attention to detail like that that will give more return on value and that's why yeah. i love tom cruise and and you know exactly. i admire tom yeah, cruise yeah. because he's ob obsessed with entertaining the audience yeah, and, and no. he goes to extremes yeah. to do that and that is very admirable and that for me gives me more more value from watching a tom cruise film because yeah it's definitely those, it's those little things so spending money on the on the value perception instead yeah. of more gear or more lights or, a, a lot of people spend money to try to make them feel like they're progressing you think going to the gym you don't really start the gym until you spend 90 pound worth of gear on gym gear so you feel like <laughs> you, you, it's true though so yeah. you've got all the gear and all the club us you don't feel out of place yeah. I think it is just convincing yourself as well that you, uh, they buy the gear to convince themselves that they're ready to do it and they are who they are yeah. in essence um, just do it and you are who you yeah. are okay. everyone's, everyone's got the cape the outfit you just, the exactly. phone is your cape that's, that's it. it you just yeah. put it on suit up 
turn the thing on and you are live. Exactly. Yeah, and you can, you can do whatever you want, as Niall says. Awesome. So, look, mate, it's been great talking to you, great catching up with you. And Good. Uh, I know that this is going to be so valuable for people watching because this show really is all about being you, being who you want to be, being real, being free from constraint, social idealisms. And, that's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not ending up in a place where you're resentful. And yes. You've, you've lived a life that's a blip in the scheme of things. Exactly, And yeah. you haven't done the things that you want to do and you've been someone else or you've done something, you've followed the wrong guidance. Um, so it's really, really valuable. I'll put all the links to kind of some of uh, Niall's social media and all of his podcasts that you mentioned. You wrote a book, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. I wrote a book that's available on Amazon called Be a Shark, it's called. Uh, Be a if, Shark. Yeah, no, and that's kind of, when you read the book, you realise I'm actually poking fun at the, the kind of be a shark, be a lion, yeah, seize yeah. the day. Yeah. I kind of mock it a little bit. I'm poking fun of it. Um, be a shark is available on Amazon. I also do, I would recommend the audiobook version. It is literally me sitting in my kitchen reading the book. You can hear me turning the pages. Raw, oh, wow. authentic. I think my phone goes off at one point. I, and uh, when you read the book, I'm not, you know, I'm not Shakespeare. I've got C in English. It is, there are gaps. There are things in it. That you read. I was reading it on the audio book for on Audible, and I read it. And as I was reading it, I, I, I read a sentence. It made no sense, and I made a uh, made a point of that of saying I have no clue what that sentence sentence means <laughs> on the audio book. So it's a little bit more raw and real. So I if you like it. hearing this voice and me talking to you, reading your book about how you can be better and how you can become your biggest fan rather than your biggest critic, um, that's yeah, that's what that's I was. That's so saying. important. Yeah, amazing. Definitely. And just to kind of wrap up, you said that you wrote the book as partly to give to your kids and say, this is life, you know. Yeah. So for anyone listening, yes. right, you're, do you're on your deathbed. Yes. You're leaving the, the planet and you've, you've, you've lived a great life and you finally charged for, for what you were. Yeah. <laughs> you got the money yeah, that yeah. you got. And, uh, and you just got this nugget and you think, if everyone just did this, you know, this, you'd be all right. What, what would be a message that you'd share? Oh, wow, big I'm trying to summarise it all in one. Um, it's cheesy, but I think the main thing is believing in, in yourself. Like I said, you, so, so many people are their own biggest critics and they go through life and they've got this voice in their head criticising them all the time, worse than anyone else out there. If you can change that so that is your biggest fan, and not in an egotistical, cocky sense, but just know that you have worth and you've got something to offer... Um, if you can change that, that's the most important thing is believing in yourself. That sounds so cliche, but definitely, yeah, having that, the, being your biggest fan is, is so important. Yeah, so important. No, that's, that's incredible. And uh, I 100% agree. It's uh, self-worth equals net worth equals fulfillment equals everything. So uh, stop worrying about what other people are thinking. Be yourself. Go and deliver some value that you feel inspired to deliver and watch your life transform. It will just be remarkable. So, mate, thanks for coming on. No pleasure. Great way to end the show. And uh, if you've got any questions for Niall, let us know in the comments and I'm sure he'll be happy to reply to you guys. And until next time, have a great rest of your day and weekend and we'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs>